Hello there, it's Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be making these little books and they are made from envelopes. So each page is an envelope and they open up nice and flat and they are so much fun. So you can see this one is a larger envelope and this one is the one we're gonna make today. And I did not make these envelopes. So this was a little set of envelopes that I got very inexpensively that I used to make this book. This book, I actually cut the papers and made each one of the envelopes for this one. So you can do it either way. If you have envelopes on hand, you can use those if you want to make envelopes. Um, because if you have envelopes that aren't the right size, you can certainly make them a different size to make a different size book. So you can see this one is smaller. I made these little tiny envelopes and I love the, the way this one looks. And then for this one, the envelopes were already made and I can go back in this now and you know do some different artwork and collage. Now, the binding technique I'm going to show you for the envelopes themselves, um, I actually had seen in a video by, I think her name is Brigitte. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, Brigitte Coopson. Um, she had made a tag book with some jelly tags that she had made and she used this technique. So I thought it might be fun to try something similar, but with envelopes. So this is what we're gonna do today and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about supplies. So for the inside pages of the book, we're gonna use envelopes. So um, I found these little, this blank um, card and envelope set for a dollar and there's 20 cards and 20 envelopes. So I thought this would be perfect um, to do it with. Now you don't have to, like for this one, I made my own envelopes to go in here. So you could certainly do that too. You don't have to, you know, buy a set. You can just make envelopes as long as they're, um, you know, for this project, we want everything to be the same size. So I thought this would be great because then I can also use the cards to do some collaging or, you know, whatever on them. I thought that would be fun. So that's what I'm going to use for the inside pages. And then for um, the spine, I just grabbed a scrap piece of t-shirt material um, that I'm going to paint. So um, I'm going to use this to cover the spine up and I thought this would um, match my cover page as well. But you could certainly just use any kind of fabric without having to paint it. You could use, um, you know, something that you've got that's already got a pattern on it. But I thought that this would be, you know, something kind of fun. And when I paint this, um, I think it'll have kind of a book cloth type of texture. And that's what I want from that. So that's what I'm going to use for that. And then for my cover, um, I have some leftover chipboard from another project I was doing. So I'm going to use this and because I'm going to cut the cover the same size as my inside envelopes, um, this will fit perfectly. So I'll have to cut it down a little bit, but my front and back has to be enough to cover, you know, both sides of the envelope. So if you have two pieces, as long as it's, you know, as big as your inside envelope page size, you're good to go. And then I'm going to cover that chipboard with, um, this is a page from my Midnight Stroll digital kit. And once again, you don't have to use, you know, digitals. You could use um, book pages. You could use, you know, music pages. You could use um, other scrapbook paper that you have, you know, already made. Anything, you know, you could use here. If you had some nice chipboard, you could even just leave it plain if you wanted to. I think that would be nice too. But this is what I'm going to use. I thought this would be cool for the front and then um, something, you know, on this side for the back. And once again, now for the covering of the chipboard, I need it to be at least the size of the envelope um, plus, you know, maybe a half an inch all the way around so that I can wrap it around. So and I'm gonna do the front and the back. So once again, I need enough for two of those for that. So that's what I'm gonna be using that for. And then of course I need my paper cutter. I'm gonna be using some glues, probably my Beacon 3-in-1 craft glue and also maybe my um, art glitter glue. And then the things that, you know, for painting, I'll probably, um, you know, have a paintbrush or something like that for that. And then the other thing that we need, I'm gonna just move this out of the way, is we need our um, hinges to make our pages. So to 
do that, you can use any kind of paper you want. I'm going to, this book is um, The Flowering Plants of the World. I don't know if I still have the cover page in here. This is a great book recommended to me. This was recommended to me by Michelle from Tape and Twine. And I love this book because I do some fussy cutting out of here. I use it for journal pages. Um, it has a lot of lovely, lovely pictures in it that you can, you know, add to your journals, a lot of botanicals. Um, this one's pretty well used. I've torn out a lot of pages, but I like how it has the black and white plus the color things in it. But it also has a lot of words. So there are pages you know, that um, just have a lot of words or, you know, maybe I'm not too excited about the pictures on the pages, um, but these pages are pretty durable. So you want to choose a paper. You don't want to use like old antique um, book pages that are, you know, likely to fall apart. So this is a newer book um, and the pages are fairly sturdy. So I'm probably going to just because these aren't going to be seen, so I'm just going to choose some pages where there's just words, and then I'm going to use these to make our hinges. But I just wanted to say, and I'll, we'll do the hinges in a minute, but I just wanted to say that when you're choosing a paper for your hinges, make sure you choose a paper that's a little bit durable so that, you know, you won't um, have your book falling apart, you know, before you even get started. So I think that's all of the supplies that we need. So let's go ahead and get this going. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint my spine fabric because I want, you know, to give this a chance to dry um, and make sure it's going to, you know, do what I think it's going to do. So I chose a, an old paintbrush that's pretty firm. The bristles are pretty firm because I'm going to really want to get that paint down into um, the fabric here. So I'm just going to make sure my paint is shaken up. And this is just an acrylic paint. Um, I'm not even sure where I've got it. I've probably had it way too long. I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. I think maybe I will try to just squirt some on and then spread it around and we'll see if this works. So it's like there was a glop in there. I may have to pull that out. It just goes to show you how long I've had that. And I have um, something down on my mat because you can see it's going through, which is what I want. Um, and now the, the spine needs to be as big as the, the thickness of your book plus, you know, like an inch or so on each side. So that was a big glop of paint there. A couple more here. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to paint this whole piece here and I think it'll be big enough. So when we, where's my envelopes? So my envelopes are, doesn't tell me what size they are. But my envelopes are about, I think I guess I can measure them, are about five inches wide. So um, that's the going to be the height of my book. So I want to be sure I'm painting at least five inches high. And then I'll probably, you know, do at least three inches um, width. Maybe even a little more just so that I can cut it down and be sure that I have enough um, color on it throughout the whole thing. And when this is dry, I may even add maybe some stamping to it or possibly some, some more paint. Um, we're just kind of playing this by ear to see. I wanted this spine, my spine to be a little bit plain. Um, and the only reason I wanted it to be plain is because my cover pages are so busy. <laughs> so um, I wanted this to be not quite so busy so that it wouldn't distract from the cover pages. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish doing that. I'm gonna make sure this is well covered and then we're gonna set this aside to dry. Now I'm gonna work on the cover. So I'm going to pull my envelopes out so that I have them at the ready if I need to you know, prep them for size and whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure these to make sure I have my cover the exact size that I want it. Now, I don't mind if you can kind of see on this one, my cover extends 
on the top and bottom a little bit and on the one side. And that's okay if you want that, but I would just be sure you don't extend too much over on the side like I did on this one. Um, and this one's fine, it opens up just fine, but if you extend too much, you'll see that you know your back and front covers may start to hit. So you wanna be sure that you don't go over on the spine edge too far. So I'm gonna try and keep it right on the edge of my envelope for this one to, to see how we do there. So my width is three and a quarter, three, I'm sorry, three and three quarters inches. And my width looks like it's about five and one, five and less than a quarter. So maybe one eighth, five and one eighth. So I think if I cut it at five and a quarter, that might be a, just a teeny tiny bit on the top and bottom, which would be okay. Um, and then the bottom, I'm sorry, the, um, you know, we want the width to be pretty close to what I want it to be. So that being said, I'm going to make sure I'm going to cut this. This is going to be my three and a quarter and that line's pretty straight. So I'm going to cut this down to three and a quarter wide here. And I'm going to, I have a, a blade that I keep around my when one blade gets too bad to cut paper, I keep it and put old on it so that then I can start using it for my um, my cardboard cuts because this will ruin a blade pretty fast <laughs> doing this kind of cutting. And you could use a, a straight edge, you know, razor blade kind of thing if you wanted to, too. I guess I shouldn't have picked that up because I don't think we were quite done going through. It may not may not even go through this. Oh yeah, there went just a couple of oh, my paper, which I'm probably gonna end up cutting off anyway. So this was left over from another project. So now I'm gonna cut my second one at three and three. Uh oh, you know what? I only cut this down to three and a quarter. See, I'm gonna have to go find another piece of chipboard. So let me tr try to cut this one right. So three and three quarters, that'll teach me. looks better. Yes. And then I'm going to go grab some more, see if I can find some more chipboard to use. All right. I found another piece that I can use. So let me try and do this right this time. <laughs> three and three quarters inches. And then for the length, we're going to do yeah, five and a quarter just to be on the safe side. And I think I'm gonna to try to cut off that edge there. Okay, now I have my front and back cover chipboard cut and I'm just, you know, double checking with my envelope size and I think that's perfect. Now, since this chipboard was left over and I had some paper on there, I'm going to make this be the back, just in case that bump would show for some crazy reason. Okay, so now we're going to cover them and I'm going to try to be more careful <laughs> this time when I'm cutting them. So um, I just have to decide kind of where um, I want these to be. And I'm not gonna mark them too much, but I really like the flower with the butterfly here. So I want that to be on my front. So I'm just going to, I need to be sure I leave enough room to fold over onto the chipboard. So three quarters of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch should be good because then the whole back is gonna be covered with an envelope. So it'll be nice and protected um, once it's there. So let me see how high up that is. Just make sure. You know, I've got the whole thing covered. Okay, so now I think it looks like I could probably cut this in half. Let me just, let me just double check that to be on the safe side. So I have a, an 11 inch long paper and this would be one, two, three, four, five and a half, yes. Okay, so I can definitely just cut that in half 
So I'm going to do that first so that I don't get confused. And if you are using digitals, you may want to be sure that your digital isn't just printed on regular um, copy paper. This is like presentation paper, so it's a little bit heavier weight than printer paper. Um, I think that works better when you're trying to wrap it around something. So now I'm going to now I'm going to mark it a little bit more closely so that I know where to glue down um, my chipboard, like in the back uh, on the back here. So I think that's about where I want it. I don't mind if the um, flowers cut off a little bit. I think that'll just add some interest to it. So I'm gonna cut this off about here. And actually I think that's centered pretty good. So I think that's fine for the front. And I'm more concerned about the way the front is gonna look than the back. So. Um, I, I don't I don't think I'll go through quite as much detail with the front one. So now the next thing I'm going to do to just make sure I get it on the paper where I want it is I'm just going to do just some little folds like this so that I can see on the back side where to glue my chipboard down. And I know if I hold that up to the light that I'm going to have my um, picture framed the way that I want it to. And so now for the back, we're kind of going to do the same thing. Um, this one has a little butterfly on it. I don't know that I can, well, I can maybe get it on there. So, all right, I'm doing a little bit of fiddling with this, but not quite as much. And I think even before I cut it, I'm just going to go ahead and mark it since I have it down where I want it already. I'm going to make my little creases. And then I can just cut the excess off. There. And I'm going to glue the back one first. I always try to do the back first so that if, you know, something happens or I realize something is happening, <laughs> I can fix it for the front. So now I'm just going to use my pencil to make marks where it goes so that I can see it better sometimes in this light. It's kind of hard to see so that I'll have it basically centered in there. And I'm going to use my 3-in-1 glue and I'm going to put my glue on my chipboard first. And I'm going to do try and do pretty good coverage here. I don't want this to move around or anything on me. And then that was definitely helpful to have those right there, those lines, so I could kind of see what I was doing. And now I'm just going to let this, I'm going to set it aside so it can dry a little bit before we do anything else, but that'll give me some time to do the same thing here. So the same thing, I'm just going to, I'm marking my creases that I made so that I know where to put my chipboard down and then we'll do the same thing. Okay, I've given these a minute to dry. Um, I just, you know, want to be sure that as I'm starting to cover them that I'm not going to be moving them around a little bit, you know. So uh, I'm taking my scissors and we're going to cut these corners out so that we can fold over the sides. Now, I like to do this because it reduces the amount of bulkiness that's in the corners. So what I'm going to do is, and you've probably seen me do this a hundred times, um, I'll tell you how I cut out the corners. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at an angle on one of the sides and come into the corner and we're going to leave enough room between the very point of the corner and about the approximate height of the chipboard. So this chipboard is maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm not going to cut all the way to the corner. I'm going to cut to the corner plus 
a sixteenth of an inch out of the corner. So let me, here I'll draw it. Let me draw it for you. This is what I'm gonna do. So that's how I'm gonna do my cut. I'm gonna come in from this side over here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room so that it has enough room to cover over the, the height of the chipboard. And then I'm gonna cut the corner out that way. And I'm, that's how I'm gonna do all four corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them all out and then we'll come back and we will um, start folding them over. And I'll just, I'll do this one with you here. So you can see I'm not all the way into the corner. I'm just out just a teeny little bit. And then I come out at the edge, just like that. So I'm gonna go around and do all the corners. Okay, once again, we're gonna, I'm gonna start with the side that's going to be the back of my book here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, fold these papers up just a little bit to kind of train them onto the chipboard there. So like I said, this is not just regular printer paper, so it's a little bit thicker and I wanna be sure that my folds are nice and crisp around the board, okay? So now I'm going to, I think I'm gonna grab my um, bone folder as well. And then usually what I like to do is start on the small sides, but I don't think it really matters, but I do like to do opposite sides first and you know op opposite sides together, I guess is what I'm saying. So first I'm going to make sure I add some glue right into the crease. And then I'm just going to glue the rest of this flap and I'm definitely gonna do one at a time here. And we're just gonna fold that over. And because it, this glue is a little bit forgiving, you, it may have to hold it a second before it actually grabs the paper. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, now that these have grabbed and they're holding nicely, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in the little leftover creases. So when we cut the corners, we left that little 1 16th of an inch at each corner to make sure we covered the whole thing. Well, those you can, I don't know if you can see them, but you can see that this comes out just a teeny little bit too far. So we need to pinch them in just a little bit. And this is what makes sure our cover gets um, covered. Our corners get covered, I guess I should say. So I'm just gonna use my fingernail to kind of push right against the chipboard, making a little pinch. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just taking that little piece there and I'm just folding it in towards the side a little bit, just like that. And by doing that, then when we fold this over, that's gonna give our corner a nice finished look there. So on this one, I don't think I did very good. So you just wanna make sure that whole thing is nice and flat against your um, chipboard. Okay, so now that they're pinched, I can just do the same thing. Now you do wanna be careful when you're folding your second sides over that you get some glue on that little pinch and that you, um, you know, when you fold it over, you fold it over nice and even and flat. So I got my glue down in there and I'm just gonna pull this over and make sure mm, this folds nice and flat and once again, I'm gonna hold the side a minute to make sure that um, it grabs. 
so that I don't end up having this fly off. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It's already pinched. We're gonna make sure there's some glue out to that edge. And then we're just gonna fold it over carefully. And then I'm just kind of watching my corners to make sure nothing comes poking out <laughs> of that little pinch that we made. Okay, now you can see how nicely those corners look and how nice it looks from the front, even though this is the back of our book. But I love the way that looks. Okay, so now I'm going to set that one aside to dry and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, while my covers are drying, I'm going to, I just grabbed some of my book pages that I had talked to you about, and I'm going to cut these down into hinges. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to, I picked some pages that I had already started <laughs> fussy cutting some things out of. So I'm just going to cut off, um, you know, the, the picture bits that I might use at another time. And I'm going to use these, the pages that have, you know, mostly words on them. So what I'm going to do to cut these down into hinges is I'm going to cut them to the height of our envelope. So we're going to cut them down to, actually, I'm probably going to do a little less than five and a quarter, which is what these are. So maybe five or five and an eighth I'll do. I'll cut these down to, and then I'm going to cut them to um, about an inch wide, an inch wide strip. So I'm going to, let's see, this is just barely five and a quarter. Look at that. One half of the page, which is good. Actually, I think I wanted to go a little bit smaller, so I may take that one eighth off there. Okay, so I have five and an eighth inch for my height, and then I'm going to just cut this down into about one inch strips. And this part doesn't have to be real exact. Um, you just want enough to, and I'm kind of doing it a little bit more than an inch just because I can hold it <laughs> better when it's a little more than an inch. So I have it maybe almost an inch and a quarter about something like that. And I will need, I think I only need 10 of these since I have 20 envelopes, I'm only going to need 10 strips. So let's see how many I got because I got quite a few out of that. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I might even be able to use that seven. And then we'll do this one to get the rest of them. Next step is to fold these in half. Now you can just fold them in half by hand, but
but I find that using my scoreboard is helpful. <laughs> so, um, you know, we didn't measure these exact. So basically what I'm going to do, and actually this probably move my cover so I don't mess them up. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it centered on this red line as best I can. So it may not be perfect, but that's okay. And I'm just going to put my score right down the middle. And like I said, the only reason I'm doing this is because for me, it's easier to fold if there's a score, but you could certainly just, you know, fold these end to end in half, you know, just by hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of these here. folded. I'm just going to take scissors and I'm going to cut the edges a little bit. And the only reason I'm doing that is because um, I want to be sure that I don't have any paper that ends up sticking out at the top or the bottom of my envelope. So I'm just going to cut a little um, angle off towards the long side. So I'm just going to cut it off like that. So I have a nice tapered hinge there. So I'm going to do that for all of these as well. All right, we have our hinges all cut and tapered down. And I decided I wasn't going to do this at first, but because this paper is so bright white um, and my envelopes are brown, I think I want to add um, a little bit of distress ink into the inside um, fold. So some of the letters and stuff may show and I like that, I don't mind that, but I don't like that these are so bright white on the inside. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and the only thing that might show is just the crease and maybe, you know, probably even smaller than a 16th of an inch, you know, on either side, because we're gonna really be gluing them very close to the fold in there. So I'm just going to each of the hinges, I'm just gonna add a little distress ink on here so they're not so stark against my brown envelopes. Distressing is all done, and now we're going to go ahead and start making our pages um, with our hinges. So to do that, all I'm going to do is one at a time, I'm going to take my hinge and, um, you know, if you are using a hinge that has words and you want them right side up, you know, you want to look for that, but it, you know, doesn't, certainly doesn't matter. If you would like to have them upside down, that's no big deal. So what I'm going to do then is um, we're basically... We want the pages to have the opening facing each other. So we have to be sure that our flaps are out and the bottoms of our envelopes are in towards the spine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, this is two pages, two envelopes make one page. So I'm gonna put those together so that they're lined up and then we're gonna take the hinge and we're going to glue it on to the bottom edge of the envelopes here like this. So now this part we didn't distress or anything, but this part isn't going to show. So um, that's all I'm gonna do for each one of these. And I think for this one, I may use my um, glitter glue just because it grabs a little bit faster than the three-in-one glue, the craft glue. And all I'm gonna do to glue it down is I'm going to put glue on my hinge everywhere except the fold, you know, because the fold is the part that you know, we don't need to have any glue on. And this doesn't, I mean, you can see I got pretty much glue on there. And let me just double check and make sure I have my folds right. 
And you wanna make sure that your hinge obviously doesn't go above or below the bottom or the top of the envelope. So make sure that your hinge is centered in the envelope. So now you can see when I open it up, you can see a little bit of my hinge and I'm definitely glad I distressed them because I like the way that works there. Okay, so that this is one page. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing with the rest of my envelopes. So I may even just take them all and get them ready and put them, oops, not doing there, put them together so that I know they're gonna be good to go. I'm sure I'll double check them again because that's just how I am, <laughs> except for when I'm cutting, right? I didn't cut that cardboard so good. But I'm going to have all of these pages. So there's 20 envelopes. So my book is going to have 10 pages. And then I'm going to do the same thing with each one of these. I'm going to double check, <laughs> make sure the, the flaps are in the right place. And then I'm going to add the glue to the flaps of my hinge. And then I'm going to glue them on, centering my hinge as best I can. And you wanna be sure that your hinge, obviously the spine is you know, up tight against the bottom of the two envelopes there. Ooh, and a little bit of glue came out. So you do wanna be careful about that. We might wanna keep them open until they dry so that if any glue squeezes out a little bit, you don't end up gluing them together. So I'm gonna keep going and we will come back when that's all done. Okay, all my pages are hinged up and ready to go. And they're also dry. So um, you wanna be sure they're dry before we do the next step because the, we're gonna fold these over and you don't want you know any glue to stick your pages together. So all I'm going to do now that they're dry is I'm going to fold them over one at a time and just stack them on top of each other um, because this is what's going to make our binding. This is how we're going to put them all together. Okay. Just like that. So now this is going to be our book. And what we're going to do to put these together is we're going to take each page and we're going to glue it to the next one. So the backs of our envelopes are going to be glued together so that our pages have our, oh, look at that, I, I did that one wrong. See, I knew I'd do one of them wrong. <laughs> there you go, that was the one. So, I guess I didn't check that one good enough. Okay, but then what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue them back to back the whole way down the line. So you could use double-sided tape for this. Um, you know, you can use your glitter glue or your tacky glue, three-in-one glue, whatever you are the most comfortable with. Um, I don't think I would do a glue stick here just because I'd be afraid that it wouldn't hold well enough, especially since these are envelopes and they're kind of um, uh, heavier. I think I want a little bit of a heavier glue. So I think I'm gonna use my three-in-one glue for this and I'm just going to take my time as I'm setting them together. So um, this is my one I did wrong. Let me just see if I want that one to be, I might have this one be the last page since I messed that up. I could actually, you know what I could do? I could just tear this off and put it on correctly. I think, I think maybe that's what I'll do with this one. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take the hinge off since you don't see this part anyway and we'll make another one. You just wanna, if you're gonna do this, obviously just be careful that you don't tear the envelope off. 
So, you know, a little bit of, little bit of tear there. And I actually, I think I had an extra one anyway. I don't think I distressed this one all the way though. Let me just make sure I got this nice and distressed. All right, so I'm gonna, I, I won't do that right now, but you can come back from a mistake <laughs> like I made. And I'm just gonna put a new hinge on that one. So I'll do that in a minute. But what we're going to do is we're gonna start gluing these together. So I'm gonna start with my first page, the back of the first page, and I'm gonna put some glue on it. And then obviously we want our edges to be pretty um, glued down. The middle, you know, you don't need quite as much glue in the middle, I don't think. And then I'm gonna take my second page, make sure I have it the way I want it. And I'm going to very carefully line things up and press it down. Now you do wanna be careful if you do have any glue coming out the edges, the back edge isn't so bad, but you wanna be careful with glue around the other edges. And the most important step or part of this step is just making sure everything is lined up. You know, you have everything even. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start with this base here and I'm just gonna go down, I'm gonna work down my stack of pages and I'm going to glue them back to back to back. doing these, I just wanted to um, give you an option, a little variation if you would like. So the other thing that you can do is you're gluing these down. I'm gluing over the entire back. You could just glue two sides. You could glue the bottom and the outer edge to make it, well, I'm sorry, three sides. So, you know, you want to glue this edge, the spine edge for sure. And then you could do the bottom and the outer edge to make a pocket on the top. So let me see if I can grab a, let me just grab a piece of paper. So if I had this glued like this on those three edges, then I could, you know, put something down in here to make a pocket um, in between the two pages that I was working on. So that might be fun. And then the other thing that you could do is you could glue the top, the spine, and the bottom so that you could have a side pocket here as well. So there's a couple of different options. I'm not gonna do that for mine, I don't think. Um, I think I want this one to be, be just the envelopes, but I think that would be certainly something fun that you could do to kind of give this a little variation and you could have some tags sticking out or some note cards or some fabric or you know all sorts of goodies sticking out of there. So another fun option for you. I ended up letting everything dry overnight. This, um, even by the time I got finished doing this, this was still a little bit wet. And so I wanted to let it dry overnight. So now it's good and dry. And um, I love the way it feels. It definitely has more of a, you know, st stiffer kind of book cloth feel. And the stretch has also been, you know, taken out of it, which is what I wanted as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down to size so that we can make a spine out of it um, before we put our cover pieces on. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to, once again, just make sure I have my measurements correct. And this is a little over, it's about five and a quarter inches um, tall, but then I'm only going to come over maybe an inch on each side. So if I measure how wide my book is right now, it's about a half an inch wide. So if I add an inch on each side, I would get two and a half inches. So we want two and a half inches wide plus our five and a quarter inches tall. Now to cut this, I'm gonna use my straight edge and my rotary cutter. Um, to get this done. So now what I'm going to do for the top edge, I have to kind of square everything up, but the first thing I want to do is just cut off um, as close to the top as I can where my color is still, you know, um, consistent across the whole thing, just to give myself 
as much room as I can to cut things down because a lot of times what happens is I'll try to square something off and then it'll end up not being um, square and I'll have to keep cutting it down. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, um, now I'm gonna line up this bottom piece and I'm gonna start on this side and actually I think maybe I'm gonna cut my five and a quarter first just to make sure I have that done. So I'm gonna line up my straight edge on one of these lines and I'm gonna pull it over because I like to be able to have my straight edge on the five here. So I wonder if this is, this is probably not the longest way. So hmm, <laughs> this may not give me five and a quarter inches. One, two, three, four, five. Eh, that's just about five and a quarter. So I think I want my long, edge to be this way if that makes sense. So I want my five and a half to go this way. So I am gonna square off one of the other edges first. So I'm gonna do that by, I'm gonna line this up. I think I wanna, I wanna square off this edge. Right here. Okay, now I have, two straight edges here, and I'm just gonna give my five and a quarter this way, I think. I think I'm doing this right now. Did I say I wanted, the, I don't know what I'm doing, friends. Okay, let's try this again. So we'll put a quarter inch here, and now I'm gonna measure one, two, three, four, five inches. So my five inch mark with my quarter inch hanging over here is right here. So. And I'm hoping this is gonna be just about perfect. And it does look like that is. I may even have a little bit more, but let's cut, let's cut it down to my um, two and a half inches first. And then if we need to take off a teeny bit more, um, we will. So I'm going to Line up my edges and we'll go two and a half inches. And this should be what I need for my spine. So I'm just going to fold that over. And so when I glue this on, I'm probably going to just decide if I wanna glue the actual spine on or just the sides on. I don't think it really will matter, but this is definitely what I want. Now, let's just double check to see, and you can, I don't know if you can see that, but you can, I can see I have about an eighth of an inch of overhang here, and that's okay. I'd rather be bigger than smaller, but I am gonna try to cut a little bit of that off. So I'm just going to put a teeny bit And if it's a tiny bit smaller, I think that's okay because our cover that's gonna go on the front and the back will hide some of that. But I wanna be, you know, as close as I can. So I'm just gonna cut off a very little bit here and see how, see how it turns out here. Yep, I think that's much better. Okay, so now I'm just kind of um, folding this piece since it doesn't have any stretch anymore and it's a little bit um, rigid because of the paint. I'm just going to sort of train it over. Now you could do um, you could do it this way. You could do put your fat front and back on and here they are all folded and dried and everything. So my front is here and my back is here. You could put it over this way if you wanted to. But I'm gonna put it underneath my um, my covers just because I like the way that looks better. And if I was putting it on top, you would definitely want to um, measure and cut your spine based on the cover being on, um, just so that you could you know, have a really good feel for how much was there. So I'm liking the way this looks. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just sort of training it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue, I'm gonna use my three-in-one glue again. I'm gonna glue the, just the 
top part of the spine here, the full, full part here. I'm gonna add glue right on there. And then I'm gonna glue that down first. before I put the sides on. And I'm gonna try to get the <laughs> stringers off my fingers. Let me, I don't want glue all over my finger as I'm trying to put this down, like I have on here now. Okay. And I'm trying to make sure that it is, you know, flush to the spine. I'm gonna give it a second to grab before we do anything else. And then once that is, I think, grabbing well, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides. You wanna just be careful that it doesn't move on you um, as you're gonna glue the sides down. So I'm just gonna be careful here. Once I get the glue on um, the flaps and press them down, then I will probably hold it for a, you know, a minute or two or three, I don't know, till I you know, feel that it's really holding and then I will let it dry completely before we move on to the next step. So I put that side down I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just, um, I'm working with it carefully so that I don't, because the glue's not dry yet, so I don't want anything to move around. And then I'm, once again, I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and flush. And you wanna be sure that you're not gluing your pages together. <laughs> So if you have any glue that runs out on the top or the bottom, make sure that you're pulling those apart. I think everything else is good. I don't wanna open it too wide right now because I don't want to disturb my glue. But there, that's on good. So I'm gonna just set this aside and we'll come back when that's dry and we'll put the cover on. All right, this is good and dry. We can now put our covers on. So make sure you, you know, have your book the way it, you want it to go. So um, as I was looking at my little middle hinges, I can see that this is right side up. So this is gonna be my front and this is gonna be my back. And like I said to you before, I like to start the backs first, <laughs> just in case. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put, I'm gonna glue the cover on and I'm gonna glue it so that it aligns with my spine, just exactly with the spine. Now it is just a teeny bit bigger than the envelopes. So when I put it on, I am going to make sure it's centered from the top and the bottom so that there's maybe just a, just a smidge hanging off the front, the top and the bottom there. So I'm just going to have to watch as I do that. So let me, I'm going to once again, use my three in one. And I like to, since this is a little bit bigger, I'm putting my glue on my book itself so that I don't, you know, have glue hanging off of the cover when I put it on. And this one, I am gonna be pretty generous with the glue, especially since we have this um, fabric here. I wanna be sure that everything sticks down, sticks down nicely. I can speak most days. All right, and then, so like I said, I'm gonna put this on and then I'm going to make sure that it is centered as best I can. And once again, I'm just gonna be careful that if any glue decides to ooze out, especially on the top and the bottom where my pages are, that I'm real careful about that because I don't wanna glue my pages together. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the front. And I think I can probably do that while this is drying, if I'm just careful. I'm gonna make sure I got that right side up. <laughs> okay, so same thing here. I'm just going to glue it right on top. 
but I'm going to put my glue on my first book page here. Okay. And I'm going to get that kind of put on. I'm going to make sure that I'm at the edge and I'm also lined up centering the spine or the book block there as best as I can. Okay. Now, the other thing that I might do after it dries just a little bit so that I don't have too much glue that wants to come out, um, I may put something not too heavy so that it, you know, smushes things down, but um, something on top. So I'm going to grab my, I'm going to grab my altered book journal here and I'm just going to set that on top. So this isn't real heavy. This is, this is kind of light, but I do want to just have some pressure on the covers against the book block to make sure the glue is sort of attaching everywhere, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna leave this and for you know five or so minutes and we'll come back and check out our book. Okay, friends, it's been a couple minutes. I think that my glue is probably dry now, so I'm just gonna move my journal out of the way and we're gonna take a look at our book. So here it is all put together. I love the way that it turned out. Um, I think it's just, I, it's just the perfect size. I think it, it's so cute in this size. And I do like the purple spine. I think it goes nicely with the covers. I think that looks good. I think that if I would have used um, pictures that were moved over to this side more, I think it would definitely be fun to have the spine uh, fabric coming over onto the front and the back of the cover. And if you did that though, I'm not sure I would glue it to this part of the spine. I think I might leave that plain and just glue it onto the front and back covers to give that some movement uh, in there. But as we did it on the inside, I think that works perfectly. So the cool thing about it is that it opens up very flat on each page. I love that, I think that's so cool. And these cards that came with my envelopes that came in the pack, I can decorate them or I can write notes on them. And these fit right in the envelopes, obviously. Um, so you can, you know, do what you want there. And I'm having problems getting that one in there. There we go. So that they can all be filled uh, in there as well. So I think that'll be really fun. And the other thing that I think is going to be great about this is that these page, pages are just uh, screaming for some decoration. So I think it would be really fun to start decorating the envelopes, you know, adding some collage, adding some labels. Um, I think that would make this so cute to start adding things to the envelopes themselves. But there you have it, a little envelope book. I hope you enjoyed this video, friends. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to come back once a week to make fun projects with you. So I hope you'll join me next time in the next video, and I will see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.